great deal of dissent that the Arab televised media and the Arab print media were more or less worthless. Five years ago, Al Jazeera was essentially still the only game in town. Today, we have satellite television alone. We have dozens of opportunities to see basically every opinion which you might want to see, every story which you might want to see covered, anything you want to find, you can have. The competition, the diversity, the openness of today's Arab media, I think, is only a harbinger of where we're going. I think that when I look at the Arab media today, what I see is something genuinely revolutionary. Now, I'm not going to say that the Arab media is perfect. Um, it's full of problems, as I'm sure Mona is about to uh, spell out in excruciating detail. But if you take all, those, all of those problems and put them into the wider perspective, the genuinely revolutionary thing is that today's Arab media has essentially done what many people would have thought was impossible 10 years ago. They have completely shattered the ability of Arab states to control information. They have shattered the ability of Arab states to control the narrative. They've shattered the ability of Arab states to control the red lines of public discourse. Now, it's not always edifying to see people screaming at each other on Faisal Qasim's show, but compared to the alternative of the, the deathly silence that used to characterize Arab public debate, I'm willing to make quite a few allowances for where we are. Now, I think the Arab media cannot create democracy in and of itself, but I think it's actually doing something which is really more important than creating democracy. democracy. It's creating pluralism. It's creating the possibility of meaningful public dissent in which it's OK to disagree. You're not a traitor to the Arab identity. You're not a traitor to the Arab cause if you disagree about what to do in Iraq. Arguing is, in a real sense, what being an Arab is all about now. And that, I think, is something which comes from Al Jazeera and all of its competitors. And that, I think, is the real contribution and what I would like to see as uh, the historical legacy of Al Jazeera and its competitors. Mark Lynch, thank you very much indeed. Um, you say meaningful public dissent, a kind of talk show which was characterized by a former Al Jazeera editor, Ibrahim Halal, as degenerating into unproductive shouting matches in which abuse replaced dialogue and analysis. That's what you call revolution. Is that something to shout about? Actually, I like my friend uh, John Alterman's uh, discussion of it as uh, pro-wrestling. Uh, better. Um, yes, it is. They do I mean, the easy things. They criticize other people. You never get an Arab station criticizing its own leadership on its doorstep, do you? That's true, but if you look at... So that's, they if, do the you, easy but things. You, but if you look at the range that's out there, if you want to find someone criticizing, uh, uh, criticizing Qatar, just go to Abdullah's station. It's easy enough to do. The difference, that's the point. You have no, to go somewhere else. Yeah, it's easy to throw stones over the wall and then escape, isn't it? The difference is that in the past, nobody could criticize Saudi Arabia because there was no place to do so. Now there is. And if anybody wants to criticize Qatar, there's a place to do it. Um, but it's neither in Qatar nor in Saudi Arabia. Is does it, it matter? Is, these are pan, Doesn't it? These are pan-Arab debates for a pan-Arab audience. Does it really matter where the studio is located? Isn't it worth... Isn't the point of journalism to act as watchdogs on your own turf? I think that's the next step. The next step has to be uh, local media. Local media which takes on the hard problems and holds local leaders accountable. Al Jazeera cannot do that. Al Arabiya cannot do that. Uh, uh, transnational regional media can't stand in for political parties. It can't stand in for a local press. But if you don't have those things So they've yet, got a long way to go. They have a long way to and go. And in the meantime, they could learn from the West. <laughs> um, when by I, hiring when, the number of Western journalists that they do. When, 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 I, when I watch... Abdallah uh, Schleifer being one of them. <laughs> when, I, when I watch talk shows on American media, and here I'll exempt our exemplary BBC colleagues, um, I think that the Arab talk shows are considerably better. There's a, there's a wider diversity of views, the passion, combined with the reasoned arguments that you find on a show like uh, uh, Open Dialogue or, uh, uh, or From Washington, or, show, or shows on Al Arabiya, the, the, val the, the, the uh, quality of these programs is, I think, considerably superior to what you see on most American political talk shows, which too often degenerate into the kinds of discussions which um, would make your description look um, kind. All right, Mark Lynch, thank you very much indeed. Mona El Tahawi. You're clapping him. I think you're supposed to be on the opposite side. <laughs> I, Mona El Tahawi, will you speak against the motion? Yes, please? thank you, Tim. First of all, good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out tonight. And um, I will speak against the motion simply by offering myself as an example to you. I was in Cairo last year for five months to cover my country's reform movement and the opposition movement and the various elections we had. And just before I left Egypt, I published a very critical opinion piece in the International Herald Tribune that took my government to task 
for the violence they unleashed on Egyptians during the elections. And on the day the piece came out, I was summoned to state security, where I was interrogated as to my whereabouts and my travels, in what to me was a clear warning that the government was watching me. This isn't the first time that I was summoned to state security. When I was a journalist in Egypt for 10 years, I was summoned at least four or five times. This is not a free media. But nevertheless, I consider myself lucky. Why do I consider myself lucky? Because last year in Egypt, several female and male journalists were sexually assaulted as they tried to do their jobs covering demonstrations in Egypt again. And just a few days after I left, the prosecutor general in Egypt dropped the case against the men who um, assaulted these um, female and male journalists on the excuse, on the grounds that there was no evidence when human rights groups and reporters' rights groups had plenty of film evidence and names and numbers of the people who assaulted these journalists. So basically, the Arab media has to function in an atmosphere of intimidation. Government control continues 